Hey everyone, and welcome back. You might remember before the holidays, I started the series on how to paint, working with Sada, the Dan Am Company, and uh, FBS Tapes, and also Andy Anderson there out of Nashville. And the idea was for me to paint FXR71, which will be unveiled in Sturgis. So it's been a while since we've done this. The weather has been horrible, and uh, I've been busy. So I'll get you up to speed on where we're at now. First thing, I want you to take a look at this stand. Now I'm holding the microphone. So this came from Dan Am Company as well. And uh, it's actually got some pretty cool features to it. The thing can swivel all around. It's got other attachments where you can hold an entire, you know, uh, trunk lid, an entire hood, uh, door skins, that sort of thing. And then they also make these attachments to hold fenders and tanks. That's pretty cool. Now, I'm having to hold my mic because I'm not going to clip it on this while I'm spraying. Uh, you'll also notice this, okay? Uh, after we did the first video and my conversation with Tony, and I got to give it to him, he's right. He said, Kevin, if you're going to be doing this stuff, uh, you need to be wearing safety equipment. So uh, I went for broke. I mean, this is their permanent uh, anti-static one-piece suit. It's got a hood, which is really cool. It's got, uh, as I understand, it's got... Uh, uh, carbon fiber or something weaved into the fabric. Uh, it's super lightweight. I can't really even tell I got the thing on. So I'll get you up to speed on, on where I'm at. So you can see there's uh, been some filler on this. Last time we were here, uh, we re reviewed one of the SADA primer guns with a 1.4 and we sprayed on a, uh, an epoxy primer. So after doing the epoxy primer uh, inside and out on fenders, uh, what I've been working on is basically just blocking it, getting everything smooth, and then going back with some body filler. So uh, you can see I've done that here on the tank, and the fender was actually very, very straight. It required very little work on the fender, but the tank did take uh, quite a bit. It is a custom-built, you know, hand-fabricated tank after all. It's not pressed. So uh, that, you know... Uh, English wheels, planishing hammers, things like that. Sometimes you just got to use a little filler. No big deal. Uh, so today we're going to be spraying a 2K high build primer. So the uh, high build primer, it, uh, it's a 4 to 1. Uh, it has an activator and then they recommend about a 15% uh, reducer. I'm using a medium reducer because it's up to about 65 degrees today and uh, the wind is coming and going so we're going to work around that but uh, that's my formulation anyway and today we're using the SadaJet 100B in an HVLP with a 1.9 nozzle set and of course their disposable cup system. With an RP, the nozzle pressure is a little bit higher. You still get really good 65%, give or take, plus uh, transfer efficiency, which is fantastic. Uh, but it's, since it's a higher pressure, it's also a higher volume of paint, so you can move a little bit quicker. Well, with the HVLP, it does have a bit of a lower nozzle pressure. You still run the gun at the same pressure, but the nozzle pressure is lower. So uh, the basically, we... Um, we'll have to slow down a little bit. And we'll be somewhere around 10 inch, 10 to 12 inches, give or take, uh, on the, the spray distance. And then just see how it goes from there and see what the wind does to us. Uh, fortunately, primer is very forgiving. Uh, so the other thing, if you wanted to go back and review the other video, you'll know that I actually, instead of using, uh, I do have their Atom Dock, which is their digital uh, regulator. And uh, instead of letting the regulator on the gun do all the work, I've turned my regulator down at my compressor. Uh, I'm at about 60 PSI coming off the compressor, and by the time it gets here, it's 49, but I want to run at a 28, 29 PSI. So with the halfway in, I'm exactly at 28 PSI, so we're dialed in. Uh, I'm going to do an initial tack coat. It's going to dry pretty quick, so I'm only going to wait maybe, I don't know, five minutes, give or take, maybe a little less, and then, uh, and then we'll start laying it down.
Yeah, being that this is a high build primer, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna mix up enough to do uh, I think maybe two more coats, and then we'll we'll call it good and let it uh, let it dry out here in the sun. This is a neat little trick that Tony showed me. You open the vent and you squeeze, close the vent, turn it upside down, squeeze the trigger. The bottle pops back out and it sucks all the paint out. Then we can do that, and there should be no paint in the gun. Look at that. Pretty slick. I wanted to go through the cleaning process one more time because there was a couple of things that Tony uh, corrected me on in the last video. So every uh, every one of the guns comes with the tool kit. It's got a brush and then this small plastic wrench right here. And I'm using acetone. Uh, you can use thinner if you like. One thing that Tony pointed out was before you run any acetone through here, remove the air cap. All right, now you can pour a little acetone in here and run it through. And you want to always keep it pointed down like this. Now you should have to do on the air cap is just wipe it off a little bit on your rag. You can see it's clean. It just has a little bit of overspray on it. One other thing to remember, I don't have the grease out here with me. Uh, you want to put a little bit of grease on the threads for the air cap, a little bit of grease on the nozzle itself. Then we would also take on our needle, put a little bit of grease here and here. So I, I can't wait to actually get to Andy's place with Tony. And then we're going to get into more, a bit more hardcore technical side uh, on the painting as we start doing the base. Uh, we're going to do a pearl base. Uh, clear. We're going to lock that down and then we're going to start doing graphics and things like that. So I'm really excited. This is going to get a lot more fun once we start seeing graphics go down and things like that. Well, I messed it up a little bit. Uh, I was rolling the stand in from outside and I had my, my respirator around my chest. And unfortunately, I bumped into the tank. Can you believe that? Look at that. Ain't that something? But anyway, so what I did, I basically just turned the fan control nozzle down quite a bit. <laughs> I'm so mad. The fan control, the fluid control, or as Tony calls it, the flat round spray knob, the fluid control, and then uh, pressure down and treated it like an airbrush. And then just went in and filled it in. And I think I was able to build up enough that I can just uh, I just block it and it'll go away. If not, I'll put some more on it and we'll do it again. So, oh well. But uh, guys, I, I want to give a big thanks again uh, to Dan Am Company and SADA, uh, Andy Anderson, the guys at FBS Tapes. And I will show you this. They also sell these awesome pump sprayers too. Uh, but uh, just make sure there's one for every purpose. There's certain chemicals you should and shouldn't use. Uh, and the various different sprayers and of course their tapes are pretty incredible. So uh, thanks to all these guys uh, for being a part of this, me learning along the way. And uh, yeah, the wind has really picked up. Don't be afraid to try something new, right? And you, again, you may you may find out you, you've got a talent that you didn't know you had. And regardless, you're learning a new skill. So thanks for joining me on this ride, guys. Uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, we've got some more tech videos coming. Talk to you soon. Have a good one.